Welcome to another segment of A Healthy and a Holy Nation Under God. My name is Dr. Jennifer Sankey, and I'm going to share with you some very important information today that we need to learn about how to be a healthy and a holy nation under God. I do want to share with you that this information is for educational purposes only. We do not assess, diagnose, treat any conditions. If you have any concerns, we ask that you seek the advice of your practitioner. It is so important that you learn what it means to be a healthy and a holy nation under God. And so let me share with you what it's all about. What is this all about that we're talking about? So it is so very important that we know in our nation right now that we are in a health crisis. And I would say that again, we're in a health crisis. People have chronic diseases, poor quality of life, there's high healthcare costs, people are even dying prematurely. And what I've learned is many of these diseases are preventable. And I would say preventable. So what I aim to do today is to increase your awareness, your desire, and even your accountability to make lifestyle choices that honor God, our creator God. And so I really do care that disease and death are rampant in our nation. And I believe that you care about that as well. And I believe that we can do something about it to improve the health, the wellness, and even the spirituality in our nation. Do you believe that? Absolutely. So there's really an urgent need. And I would say an urgent need to make lifestyle changes, not only for now, but also for eternity. So what I want to do is to promote living healthy, happy and holy for the purpose of helping us to align our behavior and that is align our behavior with God's moral and health laws which are intended to improve the overall conditions in our nation and to prepare us for heaven. That is great news. And so I've already given you the disclaimer that this is for educational purposes only. And it is important for you to know that what we talk about on this program is from the word of God. That is our source of truth. You will hear information about research from the Healthy People 2020, 2030, from the World Health Organization, from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, but the word of God, yes, the word of God is our source of truth. And so there's a lot of health news from around the world that I wanna share with you. But when I look at the health news from around the world, it tells me that we absolutely need a healthy, and a holy nation under God. Yes, the World Health Organization, they're talking about the Omicron variant. They're talking about being ready for it. But what I like that they're talking about is there's a 10th global conference on health promotion. Health promotion, that means that not, we're not being reactive, we're being proactive. We're learning ways to take care of our own body and be responsible for the outcomes. Also, when I look at the the uh, Prevention Chronic Disease website is talking about the public health response, the U.S. public health response to COVID-19 and chronic disease. And next it says, continuing the commitment, continuing to commitment to improve, that's the word, improve population health. To me, that is great news. Anyone that's trying to improve is absolutely great news. So in our nation, we know that we're unhealthy for various reasons. We're even ungodly for various reasons. And I like to say that many of those reasons are related to man-made laws that are used as the standards for health. But we have God's laws that we want to make sure that we elevate them and hold them as the standards of truth. Also in our society, there's an acceptance of unhealthy lifestyle practices. Yes, we know about the fast food, the all you can eat restaurants, and we know that even smoking and drinking, there's really no restriction on that. And people eat and drink and do all kinds of things that are harmful to the body. But we also have an individual choice. Yes, I have an individual choice. You have an individual choice. But many times we're reluctant to follow all of God's laws because we want to hold on to those family traditions. But I want to tell you that we want to have a healthy and a holy nation under God. So today I'm gonna to really focus on rest and restoration. Throughout the previous series, we've talked about the tree of life. And from the tree of life, there are so many lessons that we can learn. 
And so we talked last time about trusting God in our thoughts and how that does affect our health and our holiness. Well, today I'm gonna to talk about rest and restoration, and then we'll continue to work our way through the remainder of those holy and health attitudes and behaviors that lead to a healthy and a holy nation under God. So what you need to know and what we need to know are the requirements for a healthy and a holy nation under God. Yes, we need to know that. We also need to know how does restoration and rest help with living a holier and a happier and a healthier life. So restoration. Restoration really brings about quality of life, joy, fulfillment, spirituality. Those are the things that we want from being restored. And we also want to get the rest that we need. That is so really important. I think that is one of the commodities that we do not get enough of, and that is adequate rest. So let's talk about restoration. One thing that I learned about restoration as I was doing this research is that restoration leads to righteousness. Restoration does lead to righteousness. And so when I looked it up in the dictionary, there are two different definitions that really stand out. Restoration, the action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. And when I think about that, that's exciting to me because we do need to be restored to God, who is our owner, who is the original owner of our bodies. You know, the other one that stands out is the process of repairing and renovating a building, or let's put that in our context, our bodies, our mind, our spirits, and then the restatement of a previous practice, right, custom, or situation. So there's so many principles in the Bible about how to live right, how to think right. And so we want to restore those to our, um, to the rightful owner who is God. And so why restoration? We know that there was a fall. We know that the fall came and we do also know that it led to unhealthy and unholy nation. Everything in life has a cause and effect. Everything has a cause and effect in life. And so we know that, that we know that if we do this, then that will happen. But God has made provisions. And I want to say this loudly. God has made good provisions for us to live healthy and for us to live holy. Yes, he has. And it is so very important for us to look at the Garden of Eden and look at everything that God placed in the garden for our good food, exercise, socialization, many things that God put in our pathway in the Garden of Eden for us to live healthy and holy. And remember when Jesus came as our Savior and Redeemer? Yes, he set the example of how to live holy and healthy. Many times he was tempted, even tempted by the devil himself to live unhealthy, to eat, to change stones, to bread. But God, Jesus, our example, use the scripture to ward off, to turn away temptation. And then God has made provisions of a promise of heaven. Yes, we can live healthy and holy on this life so that we can prepare for heaven. And God does give us a choice to be restored from sickness and disease and death. In Psalms 103, it talks about, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, and with us and who healeth all thy diseases, redeemeth thy life from destruction. That is restoration. And so there's many stories in the Bible about restoration. Remember Saul, he was persecuting the Christians, thinking that he was doing God's work, and God on that journey, when he was gone his way, God actually restored him, blinded him, told him, why are you persecuting me? So I tell the stories because Saul had to be restored to Paul, and then he began to do God's work. So many times our lifestyle habits, the things that we're doing, we think we're doing right, but it's being harmful to our body. God can restore us. Remember Naaman? He actually went to the dirty pool and went down seven times. He had this illness, this sickness. It was only by being obedient that he was able, his skin was cleansed like a baby's skin. 
no longer leprosy, no longer any disease on his body, but it took him to that persistence. And I want to focus on that. Restoration sometimes takes persistence, maybe not one time, but two times, but three times, even up to seven times, being persistent with making lifestyle changes so that you can live your best life, healthy, happy, and holy. Remember Hezekiah? He was given a death sentence and he begged, he pleaded with God to extend his life. God heard. He extended his life 15 more years, but in that time period, he had, God had a special work for him to do. And so what I would say to any of us, if we're not feeling well now, we have some type of diagnosis that we are concerned about, we can go to God. We can ask God to help us through it. It is so important that we trust God and go to God in prayer, fervent prayer, to be restored. We probably even have family and friends who have their stories too, of testimonies of their lives being extended, of their health being restored. I know of people who were diagnosed with cancers and God restored them. I know of people who were diagnosed with kidney diseases and God restored them. I know of people who've had diabetes and hypertension and God, because of their obedience, restored them. So it is so very important for us to know that there are some conditions for being restored. God will restore. Absolutely, he will restore. But there are some conditions. Number one, we must recognize that we have a problem, that our lives are not aligned with what God wants us to do. The next one, we need to make sure that we have an open mind and willing to change. That is so important. Many times we hear truth, we gain truth, we believe in truth, but are we willing to change? Is our heart open to change? Then we need to repent of our sins and turn away from our sins. What I've learned about health and holiness is unless we repent of our sins and turn away from our sins, we will be in the same condition that we are. And we'll be on that pathway to destruction and unhealthy living and diseases and sometimes premature death. And so we want to make sure that when we repent and turn away from our sins, that we turn to God, we rely on God, and we live in accordance with all of his laws and trust God and rely on him for the outcome. So the reason I say that, you know, and I know of people who have lived a healthy life as it appears, eating, exercising, doing all of those health laws, and there are some times that they are plagued with diseases. And oftentimes we question and wonder why. But what I would say is obedience to God is more important than the outcome. Long as we obey his laws, we have to believe and trust God for the outcome. And so restoration matters to God. In Joel 25, 6, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palma worm, my great army, which I sent among you. God can restore us mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, emotionally. He can restore us. All the years that things have been taken away from us, God can restore. In Jeremiah 30, 17, it says, for I will restore health. I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. When God restores, we have a testimony to the world who thought of us maybe once as an outcast, that God can heal. He can restore health when we obey and leave the outcomes to him. And then in Psalms 51, 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. God wants to restore our nation. He wants to heal our nation. He wants to restore to our nation the joy of his salvation. And it is so important that we not lose sight of that. I love this verse in Psalms 23.3. It says, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And there's more to it. But today, I am hoping 
that your soul will be restored. I am hoping that as your soul is restored, it will lead you in the paths of righteousness for God's sake, not only for now, but for eternity. So God restores those who know and who follow his laws. Restoration leads to righteousness and right living. Restoration leads to righteousness, which is right living. So there's many benefits to restoration. It returns our mind and our body and our spirit to God, which are his. We are made in the image of God. It gives us clear thinking, helps us with decision-making. It heals our body, regenerates healthier cells. You know, the body is constantly regenerating cells. And it gives us a submissive spirit. If the Lord says so, I will do it. And it allows us to take responsibilities for right practices, repairs our unhealthy body. Our healthy habits will restore our mind and our body and our spirit into the best condition in the image of God. And then there are rewards for restoration. We live longer, higher quality of life, prevent or even reduce our risk of diseases, and most importantly, it prepares us for heaven. So God restores. Revelations 22, 14 says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Is restoration worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely, restoration is worth it. It increases our awareness and desire to do God's commandments. It gives us the energy and the enthusiasm to obey all of God's commandments. And then God rewards us with our right to the tree of light, which is located in the holy city, which is heaven. That means that we can live with God forever and ever and ever. God restores and he wants to restore you he wants to restore me into his image. And the, the choice is ours. And so if you need to be restored, what in your life needs to be restored? Your sense of purpose, healthy lifestyle practices, relationships, a structured schedule, the joy of salvation and spirituality. Does your accountability need to be restored? What about your discipline and peace and forgiveness? What about positive thoughts? Do they also need to be restored? The question I give to you, what needs to be restored in your life? And so sometimes we're sitting there and we're wondering, yes, I want to be restored. Yes, I need to be restored. But there's many things that are plaguing us. We're feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes we feel weary. Sometimes we're struggling with those negative thoughts. Sometimes we're not even getting enough sleep and we are stressed, but we need to be restored. And you know what? Many times, the reason we're not restored because we have robbers of rest. Robbers, 24 society, fast pace, easy access, in access 24 hours a day, imbalances between work and social and spiritual life, high demands, limited resources, demands even on the job even at church, even the demands of others. And sometimes we put the demands on ourselves. We're overachievers. And that sometimes can lead to robbing us of the valuable rest that we need. And so it is important that we establish boundaries and we set realistic expectations because those robbers of rest can help us really put our health at risk. So when you rest, you want to reset, refresh, rejuvenate your entire body. That's why we rest. And the Lord says, come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I, that's God speaking to us, will give rest. That's in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. So our nation needs to rest. We do, we're 24 seven, high pace, 
pressures, demands. We need to rest in order to be a healthy and a holy nation under God. Rest, rest. And God is inviting us to come to him to gain the rest that we need. So there's many types of rest, time alone, physical rest, resting and restoring the body, getting sleep, maybe getting a massage or attending a yoga class, resting the mind, giving your mind a break by shutting off negative thoughts. Maybe even just establishing a routine can help with resting your mind, making notes, writing notes for reminders. That way you don't have to um, store everything in your mind. Emotional rest, connecting with your feelings and then disconnecting or keeping your distance from toxic relationship. Rest, time alone, rest, social rest, having supportive social relationships, establishing boundaries in a schedule and a routine. Sensory, giving your senses a break, sometimes limiting media time, music, computer, all of that needs a break. And then spiritual rest, that Sabbath rest, Permission to rest that God has talked about in Exodus 20, 8 through 11, which is in his commandments, right in the center of his commandments. So give yourself a break. You know, rest was established at creation. That daily rest. Remember at the end of every day, God said, it is good. It is very good. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. So we need rest every day. Don't save up rest and say, oh, I'll catch up on the weekend. You can never, ever catch up on rest. Once you lose it, you lose the rest. And it's important that you get adequate rest so that you can detoxify the body of impurities. That is the time that the body rejuvenates and prepares you with the energy that you need for the next day. And so it's very, very important that you get adequate rest, set a bedtime. All of those are things that you can do to give yourself a break. And rest really enhances and sharpens your mental, your physical, and your spiritual performance. If you're wondering why you're not reaching your goals, ask yourself, am I getting enough rest? If you have mind fog and you're wondering why, ask yourself, am I getting enough rest? God gives us permission to rest. The Bible, Proverbs says, it's not wise to rise early and stay up late. It is really important that we get rest. He's given us a Sabbath rest, which is the seventh day of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sabbath. The seventh day of the week, Saturday, is Sabbath rest. And we should rest from all the cares of this world, God has given us permission to rest. So when we don't get enough rest, it is harmful to our health. And I would say again, our nation, in order to be healthy and holy under God, we need to get adequate rest because poor sleeping habits are harmful to our health. It is causes an inability to focus, mentally focus. It impairs our judgment and our discernment. Sometimes we do things and we think, oh, did I do that? Why did I do that? It's because we maybe didn't get enough rest when we misplace things and can't remember things. Is it because we're not getting enough rest? Also poor motor skills, performance, productivity, moving slower than normal. It affects our moods. We become more irritable and more anxiety when we do not get enough rest. So if you're wondering why you're irritable, one, ask yourself, how much rest am I getting? Is it good sound quality rest? It increases our risk of depression when we have poor sleeping habits, increases pain and disabilities, increases health problems, increases the risk of a heart attack increases our risk of high blood pressure, obesity, and even other health problems. The body needs to rest, to detoxify, to rejuvenate, to function at its best. It even weakens our immune system. We're in a pandemic and we, we're in a pandemic. We need the strongest immune system possible. We need it 
And so it's so very, very important that we get adequate rest so that we are not depressed, so that we're not at risk for those health conditions. And even inadequate rest shortens our life and leads to burnout. We don't need any of those in our nation right now. We need a strong nation, a healthy nation, a godly nation under God. So very important. And so I would say stop, stop, stop before you drop, stop. And let you, because your body will stop you. If you push it too hard, push it beyond its limits, it will stop you. Schedule time to rest. Now, any too much of a good thing can be bad. So don't try to extend rest beyond, you know, all day in the bed. That is not good. You want to set limits for work, for home, for pleasure. Schedule time to take vacation. If you're still working, schedule your vacation at the beginning of the year before you get exhausted. Look ahead and put it on your calendar. When I was working, and I got this tip from my brother, at the beginning of the year, you go through your calendar and strategically place days off that you want to rest. You don't need to have a doctor's appointment or you don't even have to go out of town or a vacation, but this is your time. We'll call it me time for you to rest. Very important. Establishing a bedtime, you know, screen time, time out. When you establish a bedtime to go to bed at 9 or 9.30 or 10 o'clock, and then you mark it forward and say, I need to get seven hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep, it's important that you be true to your body. Be true. Go to bed. Even if you're not sleepy, lay down, rest the body. You will fall asleep at some point, even if you have to count sheep but lay the body down and be kind to your body and allow it to rest and set an alarm to remind you it's time to prepare for bedtime. Set an alarm, it's time to get up. And some people do not even use an alarm clock. They have trained their body that they go to bed at a certain time and they wake up at a certain time and they are rested. Another way to schedule rest is starting your day with God, meditating on his word in the beginning of the day and throughout the day, that is the best rest that you can have is resting in God, spending time with him, listening to him, leading, allowing him to lead in God and direct your path. That is rest. That's the best rest possible. So to get quality rest, make sure you're in a quiet room, dark room, comfortable bed, and clear your mind. Clear your mind of all the things of the day and pray. Clear your mind of all the things of the day and pray. Let the last thing be on your mind is prayer and praises to God for a beautiful day. So in the Bible, Sabbath rest matters to God. Genesis 2, 1 through 3, speaks about that God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. The seventh day being Saturday. Exodus 28 through 11 speaks about, we have six days to labor and do all of our work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord our God. Sabbath rest matters to God. In Isaiah 58, 13 through 14, it says, if you turn your foot away from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasures on my holy day. This is God speaking to us and call the Sabbath a delight. I love this. Call the Sabbath a delight. The holy day of the Lord honorable and honor him from doing, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasures, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight in yourself in the Lord. So these verses about Sabbath rest lets me know that rest, Sabbath rest, matters to God. Even more about Sabbath rest. The Sabbath rest with God is also found in Mark. Mark 2, 27. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. I'm glad for the Sabbath. If God had not given us the Sabbath, many of us would work 24-7. 
we would just keep going, 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 going until we drop. But God in his mercy knew that man needed time to rest, reconnect with God, reconnect with their fellow man, rejuvenate for the work that's ahead, rest. And then Hebrews 4.4, 4, for he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. In the New Testament, in the Old Testament, Sabbath is mentioned, the seventh day is mentioned as God's Sabbath because Sabbath rest matters to God. So stay awake. There's sometimes that you should stay awake. We've talked about restoration and rest are ways to have a healthy and holy nation to God, but there's sometimes that you should stay awake. You should not sleep when God wakes you up. If you're sleeping, you're in a good dream, you wake up, God is waking you up for a very purpose, for a purpose to commune with him, to pray with him, to meditate, to pray for others. It's happened to me. It may have happened to you as well. You're sound asleep. You wake up at two or three in the morning, like, why am I awake? That was some good sleep. But God has waken you up for a special purpose. Tune into God. Find out why has he waken you up, for what reason, and then respond to him. Another one was disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember, Jesus was praying. The disciples were sleeping. Jesus was praying because he knew what was ahead of him. He woke up the disciples. They woke up for a minute and went right back to sleep. And then when they woke up, the men were there in the garden ready to take Jesus away. We need to be awake right now. Our nation is in a series of crises, not just a pandemic. We have crime, we have many things in our nation, turbulent things in our nation that are warning us that Jesus is soon to come. We need to stay awake and pray. Pray for our nation because there are trying days now and even more trying days ahead. And we want to be awake and ready and prepared and praying for those days ahead. Remember in the Bible, the 10 virgins, they were waiting for the bridegroom and they fell asleep. Five had oil, five did not. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we need to stay awake, wide awake, wide awake, especially as it relates to our moral and health laws, being obedient to them. Many times in our society, the types of foods that we eat are kind of like, almost like introduced so subtly that we don't recognize it. Many things are introduced so subtly that compromises our health and our well-being. And so as the virgins, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to have discernment, to know, to do, to obey the laws of God. We know that we are prepared for the bridegroom, which is Christ's soon return. We need to stay awake. That is one way that we can alert and warn our world that Jesus is soon to come. Do we need to be healthy? Absolutely. Do we need to be holy? Absolutely. But we need to warn the world and be a witness for Christ that he is soon to come. And what can we do to live healthy, happy, and holy? We should be a witness for Christ in all of those areas. So do not sleep when God wakes you up to the truth. You've heard some truth today about how it's important to be restored, turning away from sin, turning away from bad habits, turning away from things that we know are harmful to our health. We also learned about rest, the importance of getting adequate rest so that our minds will be clear, so that we can make good decisions and judgment so that we can perform at our best and have the energy and the enthusiasm that we need to share with others how to be healthy, how to live well, how to be spiritually well, spiritually well, how to have the joy of the Lord as our strength during these trying times. So we do know that restoration and rest are necessities for a healthy and a holy nation under God. We know that. We also know that restoration leads to righteousness and right habits that aids aligning our mind, our body, and our spirit with God's. We also know that to function at our best, we need to schedule time to rest. 
This will help us to think and to feel and to connect with God and others better. And then lastly, Sabbath rest is a 24 hour gift from God that restores us weekly. That's the good news. That's what it will take to have a healthy and a holy nation under God. So a healthy and a holy nation under God needs adequate rest, including Sabbath rest. A healthy and a holy nation under God needs adequate rest, including Sabbath rest. So imagine, imagine with me, just close your eyes and imagine with me, a restored and a well-rested nation under God. Wow. Imagine what that would be like. People's attitudes and temperaments would be different. Possibly less crime, healthier people, less need for hospitals and clinics and doctors. Imagine if we individually took responsibility for our health and our wellness of what we eat, drink, and do. Getting adequate nutrition, getting out in the sunlight and exercising, drinking enough water, getting enough sunshine, putting our complete and total trust in God and being temperate in all that we do, getting fresh air, getting adequate rest. Imagine, imagine if stores didn't stay open 24 seven, if they closed down, I remember the time when stores used to close down at seven or eight. Now they close down much later and people go to the store at all times of night and day because they have access to it. I remember when lights used to be turned out at a certain time. Now electricity just stays on round the clock because of the access. But imagine, God wants us to be a restored and a well-rested nation under him. He does, and that's why he's given us his word in the Bible for us to adhere to, not just one day, but every day and to make it a lifestyle that we are consistently obedient to the word of God. So God has promised us a healthy and holy nation under him. In 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, this is the whole conclusion of the matter. If my people, that's you, that's me, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, live healthy, practice healthy lifestyle. That's humbling ourselves under God and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's great news. Humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways. That's all restoring us back to God. It's only then will God hear, hear us, forgive our sins, and heal our land. God wants to restore us. He wants to heal our land. And I would say, I want to be healed. I want our nation to be healed. I believe our nation can be healed and healthy, and I believe our nation can be holier, but it takes individual people like you and me who are called by God's name, who believe in God, who believe in his commandments, who believe that living right is the way to the tree of life. Living right is the way to the tree of life, which is in heaven. It is my prayer, it is my hope that when we look at all of these principles, how to have a healthy and a holy nation under God, by acknowledging God as our creator and our maker of our bodies, by knowing and obey God's moral and health laws, by taking responsibility, by choosing lifestyle practices which contribute to the health of the mind and the body, and by sharing these health principles and testimonies about God's blessings and of preserving and restoring our health with others, then, then we can have a, a nation that is well, a nation that's spiritually well, a nation that has the joy of God in everything that we do. It, nothing is too hard for God. It takes a made-up mind 
a, a repentant spirit and actually taking action to follow in the paths of righteousness. So get adequate rest to reduce your health and spiritual problems. Adequate rest can reduce your risk of health and spiritual problems. Remember, inadequate rest impairs our mind and our judgment and our discernment. And so many times when we're tired, we eat more, we sit less, we do less because we do not have the energy to do our best. So get adequate rest. What one choice will you make to be restored to God? This is that personal commitment to God. All of us should make at least one, one choice to be restored to God. Is it starting our day with prayer, praying throughout the day, consulting God for every decision? How is it that you want to be restored to God? Will you worry less, worship more, fear less, have more faith? What is it you will do to be restored to God? And then what steps will you take to get adequate rest to live healthy and holy? Is it setting an alarm clock, setting a bedtime, turning everything off early, making sure that you're comfortable, turning off the lights? What is that? Only you can make that decision. But I can tell you, if you get adequate rest, you will perform at your best. So beloved, in 3 John 1, 2, I pray that you will prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. That is my prayer for me, for you, for our families, for our nation, that we will prosper, prosper and be in health. So let's pray for us. Let's pray for our nation. Dear Heavenly Father, it's with exceeding joy and gladness that we have an opportunity to be restored to you and to gain rest and the Sabbath rest that you have put in place since creation. And so, Lord, we know our nation is in a pandemic. We know our nation is in a panic about what's happening around it. We know there's high levels of crime, which shows that there's an imbalance between our holiness and what you expect from us. And so, dear God, as this word has gone forth from you through me, I pray that decisions will be made as it relates to health and wellness, rest and restoration, so that we will prepare for your soon return. This is an exciting time. We see the signs and you are soon to come. But Lord, it is our desire to be ready when you come in the clouds of glory so that we will be saved with you. Throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, we can live with you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much for joining us for a healthy and a holy nation under God. It is my prayer, it is my belief that what you've heard today is going to help you on your journey to health and wellness. Not only you, but our nation. I would ask you share this video with your friends and with your family to let them know that we are on a journey to have a healthy and a holy nation under God. Until next time, my name is Dr. Jennifer Sankey, and it is my prayer that you have life, live life, and live it more, more, abundantly.